Poltergeist. The word poltergeist of German origin means knocking spirit. However, if we are to believe specialists, the presence of an entity during these manifestations is still uncertain. Unless, of course, the spirit world is just bluffing. Manifestations like those witnessed in St. Catharines belong to a group called poltergeists. They are the hardest to document. Only 12% of these cases are taken seriously and studied by parapsychologists. The reason for the low percentage of follow-ups lies primarily in the fact that these occurrences are spontaneous and never last for very long. There's also the fact that in many cases the poltergeist agent, the person around whom the incidents seem to occur, often thinks that he is possessed and thus is reluctant to speak openly of what is happening to him. Nowadays, most experts speak of the poltergeist phenomenon as an unexpected manifestation of mind over matter, referred to as psychokinesis, and in a broader sense, the connection between our thoughts and the world around us. At the core of these manifestations is a person referred to as a poltergeist agent. This person is often young, either a teen or preteen of average intelligence. In most cases, the agent is a person suffering from emotional problems, hence the violent aspect of these manifestations, rapping sounds, broken objects. Generally speaking, the manifestations occur at the home of the agent, but if the agent moves, it is possible that the manifestations will follow the agent to his or her new home. Research into parapsychology shows that poltergeist activities tend to occur in dysfunctional families where aggressive behavior is repressed. This aggression is suppressed in the subconscious of one of the family members until it finally explodes in the form of a poltergeist. Although this theory is accepted by practically the entire parapsychology community, researchers acknowledge that they have no proof that mind over matter can produce such large-scale results. In the early 1970s, a group of parapsychology researchers in Toronto conducted an experiment with significant results. The uh, Philip experiment is still copied and attempts are made to duplicate and replicate it all around the world. It consisted of a group of very ordinary people gathered around a table and they created a fictional person, someone named Philip. They made drawings of Philip, they composed uh, music that he would have, or, or rather they uh, sang songs that he would have heard, and they would ask him questions. It took a long period of time for them to be able to get in any answers, such as, um, um, who is your latest love, that kind of thing. Most of the uh, questions had to be in a yes or a no form so that there could be table wrapping. And they would all concentrate very hard upon the question and upon Philip over many, many months until finally they began to get raps, yes or no. And then finally their own psychic energy made it possible for the table to move, and to move very violently, as a matter of fact. The experts agree that there was nothing particularly otherworldly about this. It was simply proof that if a lot of people close together concentrate fully upon the an event or a person, they can in fact create a communication that um, one often hears about in seances, talking to the dead and that kind of thing. Uh, there was n n nothing spiritual about it at all. It was simply a case of a four or five people concentrating very hard over and over and over again until in their own psyches this person, Philip, existed. With some variance, 
Experts believe that the same mechanism behind the phenomena produced in the Phillips experiment is also behind Boltergeist type activities. As for how exactly this mechanism works, no one knows for sure. Ghost stories have always been a part of pop culture, from ancient times up until now. However, it wasn't until the end of the 19th century that the stories began to be studied more thoroughly and scientifically. Nowadays, parapsychology is shedding new light on old beliefs. Without completely excluding the possibility of a connection with the spirit world, experts now believe that these manifestations could be caused by a host of unknown phenomena many of which are linked to extrasensory perception, or ESP, as it is commonly called, and the power of mind over matter. Unfortunately, there is no theory convincing enough to explain the mechanics behind these phenomena. For now, parapsychologists are toying with various speculations in the hopes of synthesizing it all into a general theory that can be tested. Obviously, all the researchers in the field of parapsychology do not share the same view on what is behind the phenomena. Since we're talking about researchers, for them, it's all just hypothetical at this stage. They're not at the belief stage yet. After all, they work in the field of scientific investigation. But even in that field, some scientists think that paranormal occurrences are somehow related to survival. They are related to something greater than our everyday existence here on Earth, if we want to refer to it as that. And this something greater is somehow connected to psychic abilities, or perhaps these psychic abilities are the visible part of this dualist vision of the world, which consists of this physical world and the spirit world. The theory is, of course, based on certain beliefs. On the other hand, there is another school of thought, and it has its own beliefs. It has beliefs that I would say are much more materialistic, if you will. Proponents of this school think that ESP is a faculty based on physical principles that we are not aware of yet, but that we will probably discover someday, if we make the effort. But it has nothing to do with the existence of another world, a spirit world. So on one hand, you have a rather materialistic view of ESP, and on the other hand, you have a view that is related to the existence of a spiritual world. Truth be told, research in this field has wielded particularly poor results. In most cases, the investigations are carried out by volunteers who often have no academic background for this kind of work. They are primarily motivated by their strong interest in the case, which can at times interfere with their objectivity. Whatever the phenomena may be, explanations that point to something up there in the spirit world must always be approached with caution. There is still a lot to be learned down here. To prove that ghosts really exist, uh, would simply need, we would all need a bit more help, uh, perhaps more subventions, perhaps more credibility in the sense that um, scientists should maybe concentrate a little bit more on research on the subject so that finally it is taken seriously by the media by people in general. And of course, um, there are not many researchers who are willing to do that because there are no subventions and little groups are not paid to do this kind of research. Even though there's nothing scientific about believing in ghosts, there is still a reassuring element to it. It gives us hope that there is life after life, a view that is more subjective than scientific, but that somehow makes the prospect of death a bit less frightening. Ghosts exist, or at least their manifestations do. Are they disincarnate beings, survivors from another world that lies somewhere between the light and the darkness? Science still has no definite answer. I guess time will tell. But with the rate at which research is progressing in the field of parapsychology, let's just hope that the spirit world does exist.